Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Equestria War. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, in which we're playing as a good old Realm of Kyria. As we are trying to modernize as fast as we can, now, we have a decent amount of stability. Even though it's going down still, we have an okay amount of political power for this nation right now. But, and the Garden of Tranquil Fluorescence. <clears throat> Autumn Blaze again touched the piece of paper and rolled up, and hid it inside one of the pockets in her vermilion and golden robes as she observed the festivities in the Garden of Tranquil Fluorescence. It had been her masterpiece of her time so as premiere so far, a sprawling and lively festival to welcome Kyria back into the modern world by inviting delegations from all across the world to witness the resurgence of Kyrian culture with the end of the silence. Delegations from Equestria, Aquilia, Wing Body, and the Griffonian Empire were all present, along with envoys from many other nations, all bedazzled by the spectacles of Kyrian folk songs and dances, pyrotechnics, gymnastics, the military drilling of the elite Kyrian banners, and of course, seemingly endless Kyrian cuisine. The past few days, had all been an effort to butter up the delegates and please them before giving her speech, in which she would politely ask for assistance from four nations in modernizing the realm. Modernizing a nation as large and desperate as Kyria, within a few years, would be impossible without outside help, help, after all. Hopefully, the foreign envoys would be able to secure favorable terms with the governments if they left Kyria pleased and amazed with what they saw. But as Autumn prepared to give the speech, she still found herself wrestling with how to request foreign aid. Winter Frost and the traditionalists had pressured her to take a more moderate approach, to advocate for the righteousness of the way of fire and its standard of living in harmony with nature rather than conquering it. The Kokurin, however, has urged her to found her request on Kira's abundance of natural resources, simply waiting for foreign capital to be exploited and traded around the world. If left, if left, it left Autumn in an uncomfortable position. Should she ask for help based on good faith and favors, or exchange the resources of her home for the money of foreigners? Ask for foreign aid in exchange for favors and Concord's blessing, stability, and become limited exports. Um, well, right now, we are... What are we on? We are on closed economy. Oh, God. Which is not bad. I like the stability boost. Or we go down here, and we'll use our natural resources as a bargaining chip to bring them to the table. And we go completely open up, which sounds like it... That sounds like a bad idea, I'll be honest. Just because you go from a closed economy to completely free trade, that'll destroy your resources. But I can use a political power. And see, that's what happened. That's what I figured as much. Ah, and we can do roads, of course, railways, um, accept petitioners. Uh, we have the political power for it now. I wouldn't mind doing some of this stuff, though. I like restoring the roads. The railways are important still, but, like, roads. Uh, for this one, to get infrastructure. We did. We just did one more infrastructure. Um, political power gain. You lose a weekly stability, but you get more political power, which we don't really need. You know, it's only 50, so... We'll do that. We can extend the Hyacinth Accord. It was an important first deal with a foreign nation after a century of isolation and stagnation. A quest your support is providing the foundation for modernization efforts has been invaluable, but now, with the modernization efforts well underway, you must decide whether to continue with the quest support or forge your own path free of any uh, strings trying to tie us to a foreign economy. As we developed in the Eastern Seaboard, which we read, uh, I think, last time. But the Karen living on our seaboards were almost entirely reliant uh, to survive through the silence, on fishing to survive. As a result, the Eastern Seaboard. <coughs> Uh, in particular, is woefully underdeveloped. We can make use of these scattered fishing villages to cobble together local workforces for new dockyards and shipyards along the coast that will boost our naval production and economy. Of course, I think it was from last time, but the fragrant flotilla. Sitting at the bottom of the fragrant harbor, three old warships, once the most modern ships in the realm, but scuttled during a sailor mutiny in the city during the silence. They've been underwater for decades now, but expeditions have confirmed that they are still in decent condition. Raising these three ships and retrofitting them will allow us to field three updated but formidable ships in our new navy. Which I want to go through that quickly. You know what? How many do we have? I want to get down here fast. We got one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Oh, uh, you know what? I think we're going to do this next. Yeah, let's do this one next. Geological surveys, and then we'll keep going down this way. Because as much as I want to get this one and all these other ones, they're important, and we'll get them eventually. But geological surveys. Kiri is full of untapped potential when it comes for, to our resources. What we produce today only scratches the surface of the realm's potential. We know. Our hills are full of natural resources that have yet to be properly exploited by industrial excavation operations. All we have to do is fund geological surveys to fund the best deposits and encourage excavation companies to dig them up. Dialectic. Dialects. Ooh, because we're supposed to be... Oh, that one. Sometimes. It was days like this that reminded Autumn Blaze just how little she understood about Kyria. <clears throat> so that fight being its imperial premier. She had always known that the Rome was a large nation home to many diverse Kyrian cultures. But never before she had faced a problem having to use a translator to speak to Kieran who lived under her jurisdiction. But as a group of Kieran from Verdant brought a petition all the way up to the morning secretary for them to resolve, Autumn felt like she was beginning to grasp just how monumental a challenge keeping the nation together during the grand gallop onward would be. 
After sorting out some confusion with the translator and the assistance of members of the Secretariat who hailed from Verdant, the issue at Hoof became much clearer. Verdant, diverse as it was, had its own dialect of the Kirin language to the point where it was difficult for Autumn, who was from Massacot, to understand what they were saying. While the language was the majority of the realm spoke and the dialectic Verdant spoke used the same script, the pronunciation, grammar, and vernacular were extremely different. But the crux of the issue rested on what Fickle Kern and his NKP party had been attempting to do in the city. The NKP had begun to offer language classes in Verdant to help the local populace learn how to speak the Vermilion dialect of Kirish, which had angered the local leaders in Verdant, especially the mystics of the Rising Fire, who thought they were being scolded for supposed backwardness by the bourgeoisie colonizers from the north. The demands were quite simple that at the NAKP leave the city and cease attempting to teach Vermilion Kirish and Verdant's schools and tea houses, and let Verdant proudly embrace its cultural heritage instead of letting it be erased by the influence of the north. When the demands triggered outrage from the NAKP members seated in the Morning Secretariat, who claimed that it was the right of the NAKP to uh, conduct these educational ventures to promote patriotism for the realm as a whole, Autumn quickly realized that it would come down to her and her supporters to decide whether to accept the petitioners or not. The heritage is important and must be protected. One culture and one heritage will make the realm great again. That's right. Oh, we're moving more political power. Okay, uh, well, we did roads. I want to do roads all together. Railroads are nice, though, but still. 78. I like this one a lot, but it costs just so much. I'm gonna do roads. Oh, go to early mobilization. That would be bad. Actually, yeah, that'd be better to do early mold. Or we get some more army XP. Well, we have already army XP, but like naval XP, air XP, stuff like that. Judging up history, it wasn't long before the first of the ancient ships breached the surface of the water. Its crooked and splintered of most mast exposed to the winds of fragrance for the first time in 90 years. Fickle Current watches the salvage crews busily set to work securing the rotting wreck to the tugboats and barges ready to haul it into a nearby dry dock, or dry dock for repairs and refitting. It was one of the three early dreadnoughts that had formed the backbone of the Vermilion Armada before the silence, and when it was scuttled along with its two sister ships, it had been one of the most advanced seafaring vessels in the world. Now it has been horrifically obsolete, of course, but some salvage and retrofitting would turn it into a serviceable, outdated foundation for new Vermilion Armada. The history of the ships was something that every full of fragrance knew well, and current was no exception. The ships had been taking part in the Armada mutinies after the silence was passed, where the sailors of the Armada attempted to seize their old ships mothballed for ten years by that point, and strike into the open waters as pirates, mercenaries, and smugglers, anything to provide for a fragrant, swiftly impoverished populace. Soldiers from Vermilion surpassed or suppressed mutiny, and retook most of the mothballed ships, immediately scuttling them to prevent a second mutiny. It was just another insult on the long list of Imperial capital, and the message it was sent was clear. Vermilion expected fragrance to quietly huddle up and die, and any attempts the city made to save itself were treason. That humiliation stung deep, and the hateful lessons that it taught had simmered for a hundred years. You must be quite impressed with your city's resurgence, Rising Sun's sudden appearance made Fickle Current jump, as she leaned her four legs across the harbor guardrail, as her intelligent eyes took in the sal salvage operation. It's like fragrance is reborn. I bet the symbolism of the raising those old ships to start a new navy is leaving you dripping with pleasure. What do you want, son? Fickle Curtain asked her. <clears throat> she chuckled. The ships were scuttled because the sailors forgot their place. They let their own self-interest overpower their obligations to the way of the fire and the matriarch. If you ask me, fragrance, fragrance was left off uh, easy for letting it happen in the first place. I didn't Curtain shot back your point. Rising sun just shrugged and turned away, her tail darting out from under her robes of flick Curtain's ear. I think it's just something to remember, she said as she trotted away. Because if something like that happens again... Fragrance in her folds aren't going to get a second chance. Your threats do not frighten me, Rising Sun. The scuttled dreadnoughts of the fragrant flotilla have been recovered and are being restored. Nice. Purchase Equestrian Naval Blueprints. We don't have the time to develop modern naval ships from scratch, but we do have friends who are already at the forefront of naval thought. We'll benefit from a close ties to Equestria to acquire modern blueprints for whips, whips, uh, ships, weapons, fire control systems, and more that will allow us to begin to construct a modern navy. Oh boy, 39 days. My goodness. Oh. Look at that. Why did I do that one earlier? There you go. Nice. Yay. Economic policy, military ah, military options. We could. We're not going to. I did move our soldiers down here too. So it looks like we're finally making enough guns for our guys, but our guns are not very good. They're breech loaded. Oh god. Ah, what do we have here? Ah. What do we have on these things? Obviously, they're not very good, but still. Oh god. Goodbye. 
and then we'll get a journal entry for a fickle current. Position of several equestrian naval blueprints and technologies. That's good. Well, uh, seafarer marines. The Psyche Psyche Trading House was a long employed has long employed uh, seafarer marines in Griffonia. It protects the ships from pirate attacks when moving valuable goods along the high seas. These marines are largely members of the diaspora, and we better start protecting their homelands rather than business interests. We we'll negotiate the assimilation of Psyche's seafarer marines into our banners to bolster uh, army's capability. I think it might be best if we... Ooh, look at that, an honest trade. Um, wait, I want to fill up the stockpile first. And this is from Fickle Current. Today my friends, and Fragrance Enterprise, and myself met with a question delegation over the transfer of ship schematics and blueprints into our hooves. While the designs of the ships that they gave us were outdated by their standards, and fire control systems and battery schematics were simply, similarly antiquated to the modern world, they obsolete the, th the obsolete three ships or we raised from Fragrance Harbor to the point where they'd only serve as well as training dummies. But this transfer of knowledge wouldn't be possible without the efforts of our misguided premier in befriending the equestrians. Even though she may be hopelessly outclassed by the requirements of her job, even a broken clock is right twice a day, as they say. The deal's not perfect. Of course, in exchange for these blueprints and schematics, we had agreed to give Equestria pr prospecting rights for any resources they find in Kyria. So in exchange for a one-time gift of obsolete knowledge, they earn themselves a steady stream of valuable raw materials that siphon out of our nation. So what hurt us in the short term is curious so underdeveloped and improperly exploited that we don't have a lot of resources immediately on who for delivery, in essence. We're only exchanging a small fraction of, what, of an already pitiful small potential in this deal, but we'll be still in the long term if we don't find a way to renegotiate or renege on the deal as we properly exploit the resources of our lands, Equestria. We'll gain an ever-growing share of our material output, sapping us what should be ours by right. While the deal itself went on without any compl complications, I had an unfortunate encounter with a delegate by the name of Applejack, one of Autumn Blaze's friends and supposedly a member of a so-called Elements of Harmony. I think she was supposed to represent honesty, if I remember correctly, which is a useful trait to have when negotiating a business deal, though I did not care all that much to properly commit to it memory. Magic artifacts are useful tools, but their importance is increasingly diminishing in a modern era of technology and silence. At any rate, the mayor pulled me aside after the meeting and tried to give me a lecture about proper cooperation with the other leaders in the plenum. And though she did not outright say it, she impl implicitly accused me of using my plenum for the benefit of my friends and myself over the benefit of the realm. While she is correct that the path of modernization I wish to take Kyria on does directly benefit the returning diaspora like myself, it also stands to greatly benefit the realm as a whole. And cooperation with my colleagues only comes when they meet me halfway. It's not fair for one party to bend over backwards to please an uncompromising partner, after all. I did try to explain this to her, but the mayor must be part donkey. That explains her stubbornness, at least. It seems that the only system she's willing to accept and understand is the one that directly mimics the equestrian model of harmony. And anything else is completely foreign to her. Now at least I understand where Autumn Blaze learned her helpless idealism from. Proper cooperation with my peers still does remain an elusive ideal, I will admit, and not one that I can easily reach. Many of the ideals of the era of the cliques are simply incompatible with the modern Kyria, particularly the traditional nonsense that Priestess Winter Frost spouts out during every session of the plenum. I cannot afford to compromise with her too much. <clears throat> also, I will lose the backing of my followers and the supporters. We wish to see a properly modernized Kyria, not one of laden with the burden of our leader religious philosophy, and if I am perceived to be too weak, then I will be ousted as an NKP's leader. Even in this life, it's like a business, I am incapable. Executive must be replaced for the good of the company. Only in this case, the company is the country, and I can have a weak executive board if it is a prosper and be profitable. I'll have to be careful to find the right balance between compromise and dissent if I am to steer the fortunes of both Kyria and myself to a more profitable tomorrow, of course. Oh, look at this. Oh, the super basic stuff. Cool. Nice. Are we going to develop a navy? Probably not, but we'll see. Well, at least. Couple ships here, though. Through flame and fury, the Vermilion Banners were once most feared in professional fighting force in Eastern Zebrica, but the silence has allowed it to decay into a shell of its former self. If we're to complete the rebuilding of our magnificent army, then we must encourage the bravery of our soldiers on the field and innovation of our philosophers behind it. Absolutely. The Tiaos mercenaries. Oh, well, I might as well just click on that, too, anyway. So. Oh, look at that. That ship. Winter Frost tongued the inside of her cheek to contem in contemplative thought as she watched the last or latest ships from Griffonia sail into port. It was a cargo freighter loaded with goods from the Griffonian lands, but Winter was more interested in the creatures on it. Some were griffins, a few were ponies, but most were Kieran. 
They're all employed by the Sinsi Trading House in one of Kira's old trading houses. Yet few of the Kira on board have ever seen their ancestral homelands. Sin Saisi fled the realm of his businesses when the silence started and had maintained its success overseas by employing members of the Kiran diaspora to sell ships and protect them with their lives too. It was coming home just like the employees, and Kira Kira had the fickle current to thank for that. When herself wasn't as thankful for the rest of the planet about that, Saisi was brought back because it experienced fending off pirates and protecting its cargo with well trained seafarer marines, and Kira had a pirate problem on Auburn Isle. Kira needed re the return of Saisi's business to establish foreign trade and use its marines. As a stopgap measure until it could train its own army and navy, but that's just fickle currents work, and everything that Kieran did was done with his friend's best interest in mind, interests that seemed so to frequently overlap with making more money. The Marines might officially have been placed under the command of the Vermilion Banner Army, when it doubted that their loyalties moved as quickly as their supposed allegiance. Were these Kieran truly ready to serve their matriarch, or were they still the Sci C trading house's creatures? If the push came to shove, Winter wasn't sure she wanted to be in the room when the realm found out. One thing was certain she knew. Fickle and her, his cronies were strengthening their own position while addressing the realm's problems. Winter and her fellow mystics would have to keep pace if they wanted to keep the heart and soul of Kyria firmly devoted to Concord and her matriarch. Every action taken as a double-edged sword. Three companies of seafair marines will be incorporated into the Vermilion Banner Army. Cool. Reclaim Auburn Isle. The pirates of Nakar, uh, Isle have, uh, Nakar on Auburn Isle have long been a nuisance to the realm. The constant raids along the coast lines have destabilized us for too long. The punishment is overdue. We'll sell forth with our new navy. Our modern army and navy will put an end to the pirates. Menace and knocker from here on out. Oh, look at that. Nice. Uh, it's not bad. It's not great. But Susan Convoy, we can work with that. You know what? Just combine there. That's fine. Fantastic. Um, you know what? I guess we'll be offensive. I like being offensive. Thousand banner system. Very good, very good, very good, very good. We're looking okay. Mining Concord Tom, the three priests standing before the assembled planet made for an odd sight. Autumn Blades could tell at a glance of the three, two stallions, and a mirror were part of the way of the fire's more ultra-orthodox followers. Their clothes and clo coats were smeared with the black ash from countless sacred fires, and one had even tried or tied gunpowder coked string into the mane. Though he hadn't lit the sparkling fuses before making his appeal to rain shine, whereas our matriarch the mirror among the masks, we seek an audience with her divinity, now the mortal Kieran who came, claimed to be acting in her name. The plenum is blessed with matriarch rain shine's authority, or divine authority, Autumn quickly countered. We're as assured, however, that all the proceedings that happen in the plenum are brought before the matriarch now petitioning her ca case on her guests. Though that answer hardly seemed pleasing to the priest, one step forward regardless, this modernization project is going too far, he exclaimed, angrily stomping his hoof. The mountains surrounding Vermilion are Concord's sacred domain. Every single peak and every last valley were blessed by her hooves. And those, it was those mounts which she first crafted a shield of Vermilion f f Fertile Valley from the primordial fire that gave birth to the world. And it is these mounds that miners and prospectors defile every way, day, digging through earth for material wealth, trampling over the foundations of our theocracy and society. They must be stopped. At this fickle current stood up and scouted the three. The mining companies are doing important work that is critical to the Grand Gallop onward. Not only that, but they're doing so in a respectful manner. No prospecting occurs within 50 kilometers of a temple or shrine, and all named mounds in the range are free from mining activity. But I feel I must reiterate, Premier, that the resources they extract are more important for modernization efforts. It cannot progress smoothly if they were to be interfered with. It was at that point that the rising sun stepped in with a curt clearing of her throat. Modernity and the way of fire are not mutually exclusive. It is, not, is it not true? The Concord bestowed the world on us, Kieran, to rule after she created it and, her, and us. It will be her doing a disservice by refusing to partake of the gifts she has given us. Why is he utilizing the resources that Concord herself placed for us would show her as much devotion as maintaining her pristine creation, if not more so? Priests are right. We cannot defile Concord's creation in pursuit of material wealth. Fickle Kern is right. The modernization of Kira is too important to ignore. Rising Sun is right. Concord. Bestowed us with the resources and utilize them with their honor. The amount of resources gained from prospecting decisions will be reduced and will cost a double amount of political power. I don't want any more unalliance support for this against the campaign. We've kind of already chosen a route for now. Ooh, right on. Oh, so... Okay, so we get these, these generic ones, you know. Our geologists have found a number of promising resource deposits within our territories. We spend some capital to develop these fields. Advances in extraction technology might make more deposits viable for our exploitation. Of course, why not? <coughs> We're here for the benefit of all. Just remember that. Ah, one of the comments was, oh, oh my word. The developers actually reference Lysenkoism. The level of detail and real-world references just keeps going up. That's absolutely true. The developers of this mod are some of the best. Absolutely some of the best in the entire white board community. And someone else says, long live our modern Kyria. One sweet. Cool. So after this one, this one's important to get. Get more stability in Warsport, which is great. We get the event the capture of Auburn Isle and reclaim it from the pirates. 
Um, for this one, though, we need industrial housing society active and more than 40 factories. So, messages, messages. Uh, army XP is nice. Ooh, army XP gain research speed. That's good. I still want land repossessions, so we gotta go here. Land repossessions. Much of the Rome's lands fall into one of two categories. Unpopulated bastions of nature or sprawling subsistence farms. But concentrating our efforts on reorganizing our farmland and making inroads into untapped natural res nature reserves, we can greatly expand the amount of available land we have to build for building projects, allowing us to increase the density of our growing industrial base. Fantastic. Troubled waters of Hyacinth. Ships spotted off the port bow, uh, gunners at your stations. Michael Kern looked up from his books as the sailors scrambled about the steamer, spurned on by the captain's called arms. Setting aside the business, Kieran climbed to the top deck, dodging a few sailors hurriedly moving up and down the stairs leading into the ship's hull, and found a spot along the port side of the ship, where Marines squinted out over the waters with a frown. Ships? Kern asked him, was spotting three outdated junks sailing towards the steamer. Are they pirates? We're so close to the Hyacinth. Hyacinth, so I likely, the Marine responded. They aren't answering to our signals, so they're likely part of the Necaramata. Not to worry, though, the forward gun on the ship can turn them all into splinters before we get in range of the muskets and cannons. <coughs> Pickle nodded, his ears flattening as the steamer's forward gun let loose a warning shot to ward off approaching ships, the shell creating a plume of frothy white water where it landed. As he watched, the junks flew up the black flag, although one had barely had a chance to raise it to the top of its mast before a kill shot from the steamer's gun crumpled the wooden hole in itself. The rings out of cheer, even as feudal muskets shot from the surviving junks began a splash of water on the steamer's port side, although that briefly stopped when a booming clang rang out and the ship lurched to the port, sending fickle currents still tumbling to the side. Some marines helped Kieran yell, but it was too late. The sail bed surfaced from directly underneath the steamer, and from its hatch burst forth a swarm of pirates aiming to the teeth with swords and antiquated firearms. Ropes flew up over the starboard rails, and the subsequent onslaught of the pirate boarding party overwhelmed the marines who could only muster a token resistance before they lost the deck. Fleeing from the carnage, Fickle stumbled through the steamer's narrow corridors, sighing relief as he ran into the quartet of sailors armed with rifles and bayonets, prepared to fight on in a rear guard action below decks. But hurling out of a side corridor was a mare, garbed in splendid raiment with two swords held aloft in her magic, falling upon the unprepared soldiers with her twirling blades and cutting them down in a flurry of steel. She grinned as Kern tried to stop, a slide to a stop, and before he could gallop the other way, spun one of her swords around in her magical grip and smashed a pommel against the scales under his horn. Darkness. Oh god. National Bourgeois Esther, oh god. Now it's going back up again, so. But we lost 10% construction speed, god dang it. Uh, actually, we could choose someone else if we really wanted to. Acceptance of supremacist ideology is not bad, but still. Ooh. If I can replace some of these guys. Can I replace you guys? Winter Frost? Autumn Blaze. I don't want to get rid of Autumn Blaze because he's doing stuff. What happens if I get rid of Winter Frost? Weekly stability goes up. Did this before on a line? Point. You get. Ooh. Master Impact. 450, that's a lot. I don't mind getting plus 15% more, more political power, though. Well, well, let's wait. The Matriarch of the Auburn Isle. Pickle Current sat in the corner of his dark cell, wondering how much time had passed since his last meal of uh, uh, stale bread and rice wine. He had awoken in the Black Abyss, convinced he was dead, and it wasn't until the heavy metal door opened for the first meal that he'd seen any life, but apart from when his slot in the door opened to give him his meals, it was barred shut. The walls of the cell were all brick, and the one time he had managed to work himself up into enough of a rage to try and tap into the near taboo to burn away out of the cell, he couldn't find a flaming, flammable weak spot to set fire to. All he accomplished was burning his suit to ashes, and the experience had left him dizzy, disoriented, and sick. Another attempt was off the table. Two steps approached, and Kurt looked up, turning to where he thought the door was supposed to be. Keys turned in the lock, and the door squealed on rusty hinges as it opened outwards. Torchlight blinded the stallion, and he had to cover his face for a few moments to let his eyes adjust to the sudden light. When he could see again, he looked up to see Kieran Mare standing over him, and he quickly realized it was the same one who knocked him out during the ambush. You, he croaked, recalling slightly at her. What do you want? What happened to the crew? To the ship? His response was a biting slap across his face, hard enough to rattle his teeth together. Quiet and listen, the mayor said, frowning at him. My name is Roaring Fire. The pirates of Auburn Isle sail under my command, and the Kieran of Knocker call me the matriarch and protector. I've come to bargain. Roaring Fire gestured vaguely to the outside world. Your friends and fragrance paid you for ransom, so I'm letting you go. Actually, you know what, screw it. I'm going to grab this one anyways. I don't want that political power. Uh, a ship will take you back to High Hyacinth, where your navy is waiting to put a tooth on my neck and break the back of my armada. This is a fight I cannot win. But I know you are also staring down a fight you cannot win, so I want you to make a deal. She squatted down and thought her next words carefully over. The jewelry turned remain jingling faintly in the darkness of the cell. I don't have any buccaneers. I have spies. I know what you want. I know that the NAKP is training paramilitaries and preparing for the worst. And should the worst come to pass, would it be better to have more friends on your side than enemies? She ducked through her robes and pulled out a white candle with its jade wick. This candle has been enchanted by the dragon fire. Burn a message in it, and I will receive it. Your navy will take Auburn out, but they will not find my armada here. But rest assured, I'll answer the call when you need me. 
Or at least me and take your ransom, pirate, but you'll have no help from me. I'm still in business, and I know a good deal is on the table. Okay, sure, why not? I'll try that one. Can I replace Winter Frost and get back Sky? Oh, that's 350. Oh my god, okay, that was a 350? How's that 350? It says 150. That was, oh my god, holy crap, okay, that was a bad choice. Hey, that's good to know, though. Now we have no political power, but that's okay. You know, things happen. Honestly, we're going down by point. We're going down by point one right now. We lost a little bit of stability. Um, we're going to get. We're going to need 70 here. Oh, God. Uh, 20, 75. By the end of this, we'll have one a day, which is actually better than what we've had. And hopefully, we'll do better here, too. I don't know. We'll see what happens. This is my first campaign doing this, so. And I practiced this off screen, but still. The capture of Auburn Isle. The fickle current watched from the bow of an armored uh, junk as a fragrant flotilla steamed into Knackers Harbor. The Marines quickly seizing control of the docks and allowing the larger troop transports to dock and disgorge their troops. But he soon realized that there was no fight to be had. The pirates were already long gone, just as Roaring Fire had promised, and not a shot was fired in the capture of the island. The prancing Karen banner of the Vermilion Realm soon replaced a black flag hanging from the flagpole in the center of the Necker, and the Marines let out a cheer while the townsfolk suddenly watched their home fall to the invaders, their once mighty pirate armada having abandoned them. Guess even Parson win the fight's loss, as John ca Captain's remark to the current from his side. Smart move on their part. The flotilla would have uh, <clears throat> broken their fleet into driftwood even if they had a, a submarine hiding in it. Without their base in Nacker, the armada's going to fraction with their way. Well, have a couple more raids, I'm sure, but the glory days are done. Current, uh, silently not in agreement, but he knew the truth of the matter. Roaring Fire let them take Nacker on the assumption that she'd one day get it back. Dallas, that would be what she would ask for in re uh, return for her service to the NAKP. She'd make a useful governor at any rate, given how the Kieran of Nacker loved her. In the meanwhile, she would take her armada to some other hideaway and lay low for a while, maybe sustaining herself off the raiding of the uh, Zebrides and the Zipperkin southeast until Curtin called her for her. He have to mindedly touch a small candle, tucked away in his suit, one later in a spark of fire heat, and had the entirety of the roaring fire's armada at his disposal. The board was set and the peace was in position. Now, now all he had to do was wait for the Simkiran to make the first moves. Aubernau belongs to the realm once more. The uh, pirates of Aubernau will occasionally launch raids on the Kieran mainland. Aubernau will no longer be a demilitarized zone, and a pirate haven. Great! Hopefully we made a good deal. Because we're all about making good deals. Fantastic. Despite, uh... Oh, don't look at that political power mount. Oh, God. Northern industry. Fragrance and Rhapsody were two important bastions of modernization before the silence, and both cities resisted its imposition to various extents. Plan on the seats for future modernization efforts. Now they'll be some of the first cities to benefit from the resurgence of modernization, and are already constructing massive industrial complexes to capitalize on this change. Hey, we're looking better. Already nice. Losing fuel every day, though, but whatever. So when we're done with this one, we're going to get 75 more political power, which is nice. And this is for the dudes who have to be 30% uh, more for harm harmless uh, countries, basically. Should be good. And then the rural urban migration. When Brown Bure had first moved to fragrance from abroad, just after the silence was lifted, her heart had gone out to the poor city, Kieran, that she found there. That's too good about the sense that they scratched their living out whatever they could and struggled to earn their day, right, daily rice. At least a Kieran. And the country could feed themselves, she mused bitterly as she lowered the morning's type set into her cankerous little printing press. She had quite a scathing pamphlet to print today, and no need to take the press apart and hide it before she hit the streets to distribute it. In the past month, the plenum's latest decrees about a gear and consolidation had taken a heart toll on fragrance. Every day, caravans of poor farmers whose land had been bought up by the state wandered into fragrance, having been promised jobs, homes, and all the amenities of a modern city. Well, they found them increasingly overcrowded and dirty slums still struggling to recover. The same as everywhere else, Brown Beret had interviewed Kieran across the scene in the past week, and the verdict was clear. Perhaps modernizing the countryside was important, but fragrance was buckling under the strain of its new arrivals. Outside her window, she could hear an argument about some merchants' outrageous prices. Rents were rising, and the cost of food was not far behind. <coughs> Her article is an open anonymous letter to the NAKP and to Mayor Cherry Blossom, demanding that they take immediate action to feed, clothe, and house the masses streaming into the city. If measures were not announced, her letter would call for protests blocking the city's wharves for an afternoon. With how busy the reopen port was set getting, just even an afternoon's disruption could surely get the attention fragrances masses sorely needed. Whether any care would actually show up, well, she had to be hopeful that the city's unfortunates would be willing to stand up for themselves. The shouts outside Beret's window grew louder, and she could hear her mother pleading that she had fillies to feed. The sound of the press whirling in uh, to life drowned her out. They're emptying the countryside rather than the, faster than the cities can handle. 
Military factory would be nice. Ooh, army XP gain though. Uh, yeah, the new standard army. It's difficult to create a modern army from scratch, but we'll have to try regardless. Standardizing army doctrine and training regimens, laying out the benefits in terms of service, acquiring foreign weapons and surplus equipment go a long way in providing that to build the new standard army upon. Providing the basis to build, yeah. God, it's going down by one a week. Ugh. How are we doing here? 400 left. Ooh. Oh, that's 30 day focus, huh? I'm get two more savings, which is nice, and just help out everything else. Fuel capacity is okay. Output, research speed, monthly population, resource efficiency gain. It's all very good. Yeah, that's, that's really bad. So, focus function is not very much, though, which is good. Oh, look at this. From good old Autumn Blaze. I left Vermillion a few weeks ago to visit the new steelworks that have been erected in Fragrance and Rhapsody. Argued for and funded in large part by Fickle Current and his like minded business partners. I've traveled a, bit, a little bit around the realm as part of the job, and even as a little bit before that when the silence still had our people locked in its grasp. But I've never been this far north. I thought all over Rome was like Vermillion or Mascot, either weathering cities, dwindling as they decayed, or the small villages full of Kieran trying to scratch out simple lives with no support or assistance from the government. But Fragrance and Rhapsody are nothing like that. There are still splendid cities, places that try to so very hard to resist the economic and societal collapses of the silence, and manage to save some of our culture and way of life from before the silence brought everything into standstill. I don't know how better I could describe it. The care in these cities still have life and color in them, a sense of optimism that tomorrow is going to be a better day. That's something I share with them, and it made me oh so happy to see it during my travels. Ah, oh, shoot, now I'm getting off topic. Or am I? I don't know. Anyway, the steelworks that Fickle Kern's clique funded are an amazing sight to behold. These aren't just workshops where blacksmiths forge steel and work their craft. This is something else entirely a modern revolution that was smothered in Kyria a century ago, but was refined and perfected by the griffins of Griffonia and the ponies of Equus. These are entire factories filled with heavy machinery powered by electricity. Another metric from over the seas, it makes me realize just how small my world was growing up in the silence, and guided along by workers who pull levers, hit buttons, and somehow wrangle these machines into doing all the work for them. And the results can't even be compared to the work of smithy workshops and guilds. These factories can pr produce in a day what an entire guild of talented blacksmiths can produce in a year, sure. It loses some of that personal touch, but we're trying to drag our entire nation into the modern era after centuries sitting on our hooves. This industrialization is practically a blessing is sent by a conqueror herself. Fickle and his friends might be a little too cynical and greedy for my taste, but the inventions they're bringing in from overseas. And the capital they're investing in setting up our industry make more than make up for it. I can't hope that some of the fruits of their labor can make its way down to the ponies working in the steel mills. Those I talked to say they work 10 or 12 hours a day in a scorching heat, with only a few breaks throughout the day, but it pays better than farming, so I've been told, and besides, we care not like the heat anyways. That's a rough start for many of these workers, but I feel that given enough time and hard work, this will pay off all for them, like it'll work for the rest of us. We just have to believe in the future we're all building together. I believe in that future and in the matriarch is superior, and a conqueror's blessings to some extent. I believe in Fickle Current and his compatriots too. We just have to work together to make the best use of the blessings Kiri has been given, and we can shape our future and into anything we want it to be. I'm going to do everything I can to make it happen. Great. Mm, pony power's not bad, but guns. Uh, I don't know this ability yet. Recommission of the Rhapsody Arsenal. The Rhapsody Arsenal was once the forefront of the Kieran weapon invention and gained fame from across Eastern Zebraca for the quality of the cannons they manufactured. But for a century now, the arsenal has been closed and abandoned. It's time to reopen the mm, arsenal and combine the inventions of the modern era with the ingenuity of the Kieran that once made it so renowned. Uh, we're getting there close. And yeah, we're not going down as much as good. More political power, stability, stability, a quiet, happy night. That's good. We'll get there. Because here, we need at more than 40. We need 41 factories in total. <coughs> Recall, rearm, regroup. Here's some of the banners with a start, but there's currently too few Kirin, who have answered the call to form a functional, modern military. We must start by organizing limited conscription and drafting peasants and commoners to create regional militias that with proper training may one day join the banners and provide the backbone for a modern army. I forgot. Oh, we're still training. Okay. From the sounds, uh, are lifted ancient texts on the nature of warfare, as well as Kira's lengthy annals of its own struggles. Coupled with the advent of the 11th century tactics and ideas from around the world, our finest strategists will adopt the practice of war games to determine what a Kieran soldier can do in these new days. Kieran Valiant Research Schemes 
Taking on vows of discipline and self-mastery, valiants are elite warrior monks who utilize their Nerex forms without losing themselves in feral wrath. They too must not be left behind in the wake of the future. When the soldiers, they shall fight with will, with carry will carry not blades but bullets. Training their valiants in these new ways will bless the winds of battle with a dreadful blaze against their forces. Infantry support research scheme. Before a king can fight with the enemy, they should take care of how many things before hoof. How will the battlefield be reached? Where is the enemy and how strong are they? How will they carry supplies and reinforcements? Um, I'll carry to them and fast. These are more must be tackled, though the idea of supposed support companies is gaining much traction. Artillery research scheme. The carrier and I have had an affinity for black and fire plow, firepower powder, tending to their love of explosions and civilian fireworks. Thus, when they learn of what essentially were glorified rifles and entire sides of entire houses, various organizations and guilds put forth plans to fashion the artillery of other countries with the expertise of pyrotechnics. This has been ignored during the silence, but within a three and a half year plan underway, I said let them press, present their ideas to the military and see what will become of all modern day cannons. Special Forces Research Scheme From before Kira's unification sprawl, lengths of Kiran warriors who can t fend off a thousand foes with a single word, sword, an hours long New York State, or their own bare hooves. But what do they become a reality for today, and enough numbers to bolster dozens of regiments? Most of Special Forces units for Kira will, on top of granting our army flexibility and unusual capabilities, surely spawn proud living tales of heroism. Vestiges. Ah, oh, Kieran Rifle Designs. Our species is blessed by Concord in that every individual can use basic telekinesis to manipulate objects and hold weapons. We can use this gift they have been blessed with to create weapons ideal for our species only that we can use, rather than relying on the designs of other nations. We want to create a functional modern army that we need guns here at home, and we need a lot of them, of course. Nice. And we'll reply to letters too, probably. So now, still going down a little bit, but it's better for political power too. Nice. How are we doing here? 15 1, not bad. Vanguards of a New Age. The Kieran Vanguards have long been the best of our best soldiers. Lightly armed and armored, they fought in as deadly skirmishers at the front of our armies, while whittling the enemy down and threatening their flanks while the main host moved in to engage. But in the age of gunpowder and mechanized warfare, we need to adapt our vanguards to incorporate modern hit and run gallop tactics in their arsenal. As much as I want this one, it doesn't help with the research speed. So, Valiance. Be nice. You know what we're going to do, anyways. Valiance, Infantry, Guards Division. Free template, huh? Sure, why not? 360. Screw what we're going to do, it anyways. So, now we can do this one. <clears throat> well, the focus tree change immediately once we're done with this one. Because I wanted to get everything done first before we do that. Just because we can. Found the Motor Bureau. <coughs> the days of marching an army from one end of the nation to the other is truly over. A truly modern army can move its troops to where they need to go using motorized equipment. Fickle Kern has offered to use his funds to procure Griffonian trade trucks and establish a Motor Bureau that will aid in researching and producing trucks to allow our enemy to motorize. Doctrine of Modernization. Modern wars are not fought with infantry formations, pitched battles, and sheer force of will. Modern wars are won by well planned and coordinated actions defined by the military's doctrine that dictate how powerful the army should act, or how the army should act. Developing your land doctrines will be useful for modernizing our army and giving it to the ability to fight effectively in the field. The Mascot War School The training grounds of Mascot were once the pride of our army, where thousands of soldiers could be trained in the art of war. The War School has been closed for a century now, and no new students have passed through its doors. To rebuild our army, we must reopen the school and begin training the next generation of soldiers. Eh, yeah, sure, why not? You can do it next. And this is from Winter Frost. We might have gotten rid of already, but... Today I return home from my mountain village of Agate for some much-needed rest and reflection. <clears throat> The challenges of the planet are numerous, compounded by the fact that the clarity of our matriarch's mind is confused and confounded by those who see, uh, seek to trick her for their own, their own game. I am, of course, primarily talking about Fickle Current and its NAKP cronies, but I have complained about those selling too much already. I would rather focus on more pleasant thoughts tonight. A gate has not changed much since the last visit, despite the impressive progress of the Grand Gallop onward and modernizing almost every facet of our lives. The monastery is still quite, as quiet as ever, with long periods of quiet, peaceful meditation, of meditation, peaceful meditation in the gardens during the day, accompanied by wind chimes and bird song. At night, the fireworks pop and sparkle with a rainbow of light and bright, uh, bright and beautiful colors and Concord's honor, illuminating the stone square on the mountainside where we gather to sing her praise. But even here, the passage of new decrees is plainly visible. Kieran, who are but cults and fillies, and a descendant of Vermilion in service of the matriarch years ago, are now grown mares and stallions, and many of them have answered matriarch Rainshine's call for our spirit vanguards to join her in Vermilion. For they would do so, however, they will first venture to the noctilucent 
sports in the borderlands for intense and harrowing training. I've seen how much training hardens the hearts and souls of many a Kirin before them, so I took upon myself to honor those Kirin with Concord's blessings before they depart. As I rub the holy ashes across their head scales and across the stripes of their horns, I can only think back to when these brave souls were but full scampering across the monastery grounds. I have known them all, and I had the honor of teaching them our holy tenets and Concord's divine guidance as I grew up. Stonecliff had always been strong and clumsy, but had a tender kindness to his heart that left him with only friends and without enemies. Flare Whip was leith, uh, cunning, and temper and mental. But she always stood by those who trusted and respected, and I know she will make an excellent vanguard. And then there's Firefly and Dragonfly, the inseparable pair of brother and sister who did everything together for mischief as little foals that proudly serve the matriarch. They and the others I bless today are some of the best and brightest gear I know, and though I worry for the hardships they will soon face, I know they'll be, they will triumph over them and all bring honor to the, to the realm. As I placed uh, the ashes of the last Kirin. I stepped back and asked them a simple question. What, what, who do you fight for? Well, without hesitation, they answered that they fought for the Matrix Superior in Concord. Even though it was the answer I expected, it still left me deeply pleased and relieved to hear it. The Kirin would not be beholden. The self-serving interests of, of fragrance, nor the squabbling plenum, nor the mourning secretariat and its factional uh, politics, and certainly not the heretics of the rising sun. On fire! <laughs> Their loyal to Concord and the Matriarch first and foremost, and no temptation shall lead them away from the path of righteousness and honor. Though charged into battle carrying a Hooferin anthology of Concord's divine teachings and tenets, never forgetting that it is because of her glory and guidance that the realm was created, and that, in fact, I feel proud. This serves as an ever important reminder that the work I do in Concord's name is important, and so long as my brothers and sisters in the faith similarly remember our devotion to our goddess, we'll be able to protect Kira from the forces of unchained modernization that threatened to destroy it, of course. I love doctrinal modernizations, the experimental armor core. The modern battlefield heavily features the use of bulletproof armor vehicles, which creates an unstoppable spirit at the front of an offensive or deliver, uh, and a decisive counterattack to an enemy breakthrough. While we currently lack the industry to create state-of-the-art tanks, we can invest in light, armor, light armored vehicles as a stopgap until our industrial capabilities further expand. Tea time with the Divine. Autumn Blaze. Uh, took another step from her tea, watching his rain shine did the same across from her. Uh, it was funny how life was sometimes. She, here she was, sharing tea with the Matrix Spirit Kira, making idle conversation with, with his friends. She knew that the Kirin sitting across from her was a divine being to which she should show respect and devotion, but she had grown so comfortable in the Matrix presence that she saw as her as a friend she could speak freely with like any other Kirin. Of course, given the situation, Kirio, the world of politics could not be escaped forever. Fickle Kirin approached me with a core request today, the Matriarch began. It was growing concern with the movement that calls themselves incendiaries. Have you heard them? They have a substantial base among the peasant farmers, and they give them an outlet to challenge their frustration against modernization into. The farmers fear losing their lands for infrastructure and urban projects, and instead believe in land justice, collective ownership over the land, and the resurgence of religion in uh, our way of life. They have even started attacking and damaging new projects that are being constructed in the Kirin building them. I heard about the attack on the dam near Christothem, uh, near Chrysanthemum, and the granary fire at Cors Silk, Autumn said, but truth be told, I have so much going on that I've been able to give it proper attention. I think it rather they're loosely affiliated with the Rising Fire, at the very least. They're certainly friendly enough to get uh, with that sect of our religion, but they're being organized that possesses a bigger problem for us. Even so, I'm sympathetic to their plight, Rainshine said. Uh, she sighed as she added, I spent 60 years of my life isolated in Vermilion, oblivious of the suffering of my subjects, and now they're being thrust into a new, brave new world just as quickly as I have. They're scared and confused, and I don't want them to be hurt because they are afraid. After a moment's pause, she pursed her lips and looked away. I want you to learn more about the situation and recommend a course of action from here. Find me a solution that is best for every Kieran, and I'll make it so. Of course, Matriarch. Investigate the incendiaries. Oh, crap. There are a group of Kieran peasants and farmers who are loosely affiliated with the rising fire, heresy of a religion, and they decided to express their frustration against the disillusionment with the Grand Gallop Armor by striking at our modern, uh, modernization projects. They must be dealt with one way or another, and thus their movement spiral out of control and further hamper our efforts to modernize the countryside. And that's such a plus 3% popularity of communism. An incendiary decision. Well, I guess we'd investigate them. Major X. Peter Rainshine wants us to investigate the incendiaries before we decide how to best deal with them. A part of the activities in the realm will be compiled and delivered to the Imperial Premier, so she can bring forth a recommendation to Rain Shine. Alright then. I guess we can do doctrinal modernizations. So how are we with this? Motor driven computers. Ah, I'll get this one first too. This just extraction game would be bad. Where are we at for this? Oh, we're looking okay. Not bad. Uh, we're doing SF2 artillery. Let's get some better artillery. My god, do we need it. Alright, so we're here. How much does this cost? 130 is not bad. Substantial science base. Um, is it going to get any better soon? It doesn't look like it, so you know what? We might as well. I want to go uh, Spirit Firepower. So. 
And for here, um, no, we're not going to go here. It's probably Fleet and Being, maybe? Let's just start all the stuff. Because I want to grab. Oh, what is this? Best of the best. Overwhelming firepower is always good to do. Compass heritage is not bad. Experience gain. Proper heritage. Ah, that makes sense. I like overwhelming firepower, though. Mm. Design cost. Well, I like heritage, and we have quite the heritage in tradi being traditional, but we're not exactly. We're kind of moving away from that, which is why. So I think. Professional Officer Corps, I mean, that would make sense what we want. I'm not going to go overwhelming firepower because you get the best bang for your buck. So. Let's go with that one. So we can do this. The 16 combo with. Um, the levy, I hate militia. You already have these guys, which is not bad, but you have already so much here that this will be. That's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Mm, no, we're good. Well, we're not gonna do it yet. Because you will need a train. Well, wrecking the cinders. Cinder Glow stepped into Autumn Blaze's office at the Premier Summit, and she immediately found the seat in the uh, front of Autumn's desk and sat down in it. I'll put together everything I can find and then send yours for you, she said, placing a finder down on Autumn's desk. Want me to give you the quick briefing, or would you rather read it for yourself? I trust that you get your point across, Autumn said, pulling the binder over towards herself. I mean, that's why I hired you in the first place, right? Right, Cinder uh, Glow agreed, and she took a deep breath before starting. The most shocking thing is that it's actually the NAKP that's behind us, or at least fickle currents. Uh, uh, cronies are funding the incendiaries to further their own goals. It's probably not a false flag operation, but an unrest and instability in the countryside would benefit them a lot, it's actually. If the countryside and native population is restless and angry, and further encourages the return entities to rally around the NKP and use their wealth to help build, fill the party coffers, which they can use to increasingly militarize and consolidate their influence over Fragrance and Rhapsody. They've been buying a lot of modern weaponry, even bringing in tacticians from Griponia, help train the paramilitary forces. Now, by all accounts, it looks like they're gearing up for a struggle, and the incendiaries are just a pawn in their movement. Pickle Currents just keeps finding ways to turn off a mirror. Autumn said, sticking out her tongue in the disgust. I know he was sleazy, but this is just on an entirely different level. And even if he's not personally behind it, his buddies are, and he likely knows about it. He, she took a piece of paper and scribbled some notes down on him. I'll have to the Reform Bureau to censure the NAKP and give Curran and his a sharp review for what they're doing. Probing it in court will be an entirely different beast, but even letting them know they were onto them and the Matrix is disple displeased should put a stop to their efforts. Any Curran is found to be responsible for this is not going to hold onto the power in the NAKP when they lose the Matrix's favor and powers of what those Curran's desire the most. Let's hope that the Fickle Current learns something from this chastisement. Um, also, we're not going to do a focus because we got to get as much political power to do this as fast as possible. I don't think we'll be able to do this, but... So, if we don't select it, it is what it is. Um, in 30 days, can we raise 50 armor speed? Or 50 political power? Oh, uh, we could destroy our stability. We're gonna risk it. Two a day. And then the next one we'll focus on is uh, the stability one, maybe. Yeah, reply to letters. Two a day, two a day, two a day, two a day. Because I don't want to lose 250 political power, so. Oh, wait, what? Banditry in the West. <clears throat> the plenum now gives the floor to Governor Amber Green of the Auspicious Clouds Province. Out of Blaze watch as the governor made her way to consider the center of the plenum's chamber to speak. The room must have been in her late sixties, but she carried herself with a fire and brimstone air about her that made her seem imposing and youthful despite her age, and she wasted no time launching into the reasons why she requested this audience with the plenum in the first place. My province is in chaos and lawlessness. She snapped, a harsh eyes sweeping over the symbol delicates as if they were axes and cairns in the trees. Uh, bandits are emerging from the countryside to prey on new flowers of trade and commerce because they uh, they know no Kieran will stop them. Where is the Vermilion Banner Army? Where are the soldiers? Things are too out of hoof for my constabulary to handle on its own. My province, as well as the rest of the western provinces, need direct action from the army yesterday. The Grand Gallop Armor should be modernizing the countryside and providing Kierans with better jobs and more opportunities than ever before, a fickle current countered. The only reason there would be a banner problem would be because of a misuse of the funds and the aid the plenum has sent to the provinces. Amber Grain scowled at him. 
You were born wearing the suit, weren't you? She snapped at him. If you spent one day of your life toiling in the fields or working in one of those death traps we call factories, you'd understand why Kieran are, are turning to banditry. All these companies buying up and reshuffling farmland and displacing farmers off the land. The farmers work for it for generations, and half of them won't even go into the cities to work in factories when they see the maimed and mutilated begging for tails in the streets because they lost hooves or horns on the job. And the farmers there work their labor to the bone for little more than a tail an hour with no protections and no rights. What else is a Kieran supposed without skills to do but turn to banditry? So till you fix it up, the West needs soldiers if it's going to deal with the bandit problem. We need to secure the West from bandits if we want the Garan Gallop onward to be successful. God dang it, are you kidding me? An incendiary decision. Autumn Blaze bowed as a formality when Shrain Chant's attendant led her into the Matrix reading room. Normally such a greeting wasn't necessary between the two friends, but when the other Kieran were around, it wouldn't do to act disrespectfully to the country's divine Matrix superior. Autumn had at least learned enough about politics to realize a slip up as small as that would give her rivals an opening to try and take her down in the next gathering of the plenum. But when Rainshine dismissed the attendant and the two Kieran were all alone, Autumn smiled and joined <clears throat> Rainshine by her side of the floor. I spent some time looking further in Incendiary's matter, she said, and placed a folder full of papers before the matriarch. And I mean, phew, oh, these Kieran are sure going crazy. They're not really a huge problem right now, but we let them grow out of control. This incendiary situation is going to grow into an inferno. So the way I see it, you can either strongly condemn the incendiaries and the government, or express sympathy and ask them to cooperate so that we can actually get to the root of their problems and help them out. I see you, Ranger, I noted, but then she frowned. And why would I not simply choose a sympathetic route? They are so much subjects, despite their lashing out. Uh, because, well, frankly, Matriarch, there's a chance they won't listen to you, Autumn said, anxiously rubbing her hoods together. You are our divine Matriarch's spirit, by all rights and the blessings of Concord, which means that your word is her word, will as well, But and Kieran should listen to you immediately, but the incendiaries might be too mad at the state and the government to, to listen to you. And if Kieran and the country started ignoring your divine voice, then that undermines your authority to a considerable degree. She sat and shook her head, and as much as I hate to admit it, I think the condemnation is a safer option. You can call upon all faithful Kieran to the land and report on incendiary activity, and they, the authorities in cracking down on the movement. That way you're appealing to Kieran who already respect you rather than those who don't. We'll listen to what you have to say so you don't have to worry about losing face with them. But you're going to make the incendiaries a lot angrier if you condemn their own movement. Then she bitterly uh, chuckled out and added, Oh, and forgive me if I say it, Ranger, but I'm so glad I'm not our Matrix spirit right now. I'm not the one who has to make the decree. Let's condemn the incendiaries and their movements. We must sympathize with the plight of the incendiaries and ask them to cooperate. Condemn them. We need to do that. Bandits have been long been a problem in the more rural and unsettled parts of the western realm, but throughout the period of modernization, they've grown ever more troublesome. Caravans and combos bringing much new supplies and goods to the west are frequently attacked by bandits, and we must simply do something about them before they jeopardize our ongoing modernization efforts in the backwaters of the realm. The death knell banditry. <clears throat> it's only taken five minutes for the last bandit cells outside of Amaranth. Uh, to collapse, the local constabulary, supported by a couple of vermilion banners that surrounded the bandit hideout and demanded the surrender of every Kieran inside. When the bandit leader insisted on fighting to the death, a single shot from the mayor's skin, Mark's Kieran, ended her rule far quicker than it began and followed shortly thereafter uh, surrendered to the banners. Midnight Candle watched with a small frown on her face as the bandits were letting away or led away from their encampment one by one, with the banner soldiers guarding the columns on either side. The bandits certainly didn't look like the vicious marauders they were in the store as parents stole their foals, rather they were poor and broken Kieran. Many well into their middle ages, many more barely old enough to be considered adults. Some had foals clinging to their legs or back, crying in fear as their parents were dragged away to awaiting their fate. All of it hurt uh, Kendall's soul, and she couldn't help but mention it when the company commander tried to buy. They may be poor farmers just trying to feed their families, but they're bandits, Kendall, the officer said, shaking his head. Desperation doesn't forgive the killings and stealing they've done. We should be helping them, not imprisoning them, Kendall countered, and she touched her red and orange robes for emphasis. The rising fire wants to help all the care of the land. If we work together to support one another, the farmers would have to turn a banditry to support the families. The way a fire only imposes order and treats the symptoms of unrest, but does nothing to weed out the root cause. The officer just shook his head. I don't disagree with you, he began, but how far should we let an individual push her interests when it hurts so many mother, so many others? Uh, would ever move forward as a nation, we need to unify and deal with the problem at hoof. Maybe one day we'll be able to stop Kieran from turning to a life of banditry, but all we can do now is play catch up and stop the ones we already have. He patted Candle on the shoulder and gave her a small nod. Go back to camp and already service. And ready service for the troops, Chaplain. I'm sure there'll be plenty more like you who want to know if what they're doing is right in Concord's eyes. Today we kill bandits, but tomorrow we may not have to. Whew. Whew. Okay, whew. Oh, recruits for a banner. Many villages and towns do not yet contribute to a banner of their own. Efforts will be made from traditional inner city banner parades of present day recruitment centers inspired by those in Equus and Griffonia. There's per sentiments of pooling, pooling's one passion, soul, and life. Uh, on fire into the defense of uh, home and country with the promise of landing a life and legacy. Oh, that's not bad. 
purchase the question guns, Kira are many, but the rifles are few. With Kira unable to churn out enough for their bandits and more, another option lies open to us. Ordering guns from the government and corporations of our friends in Equestria in exchange for a hefty sum. Request Equestrian surplus. Equestrian Lilo rifles, an old model, but for plent plenteous wars who have rarely seen modern day guns up close, is more than sufficient. Asking Equestria to send a shipment of supplies or surplus Lilos uh, our way will save off any interruptions in our modern army training. But, 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 the final focus, finally, after three episodes, breakneck industrialization. Rapid industrialization of a realm, at a rate never before seen elsewhere in the world, has come with its own host of, host of challenges. One of the most critical of these is the need for skilled and unskilled labor, and we've gone to great lengths to attain workers from modern society. But bringing so many current into one place to work for the gears of capitalism comes the risk of radical leftist ide ideas spreading around. Bourgeoisie and the proletariat. Finally. Vanguards, huh? Well, we could try it. See what it's like. Except the petitioners. Beautiful. How are we doing here? Doing all right. Nineteen count with it is okay. Not great, but okay. Oh, uh, we shouldn't have any more issues here. I don't mind this one. Better consumer goods would be nice. Oh, we need to get more weekly war support as well. Um, but use political power for what? Partial mob? We can do that. Why not? We should be good where we're currently at. So now we have more factories to work with. We get slightly more fuel. More factories to work with. Building ourselves up more and more and more and more and more and more. You know what? We got that civvy there. Or that milli there. We're going to do this. Focus more on the civvies. But we're going to start making some military factories because we're going to need them. Because uh, y'all don't, know, uh, these guys are done, are d going crazy. Three and a half years, galloping on four. Look at that. Today marks two and a half years since we began the grand gallop onward. Autumn Blaze proclaimed from the podium in the grand hall of the Flenum, but <clears throat> her mood was far from uh, celebratory or joyful. We have accomplished so much in the town we've been given, but it's not enough yet. Not yet. Don't misunderstand me, though. We modernize faster than any nation in the world has ever has. And that's a terrific accomplishment by itself. The life of every Kieran in the realm is growing better with each passing day as we shake off the last vestiges of the silence. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for any Kieran here, though. Kieran is strained in a way it's never been before. There's so much so social upheaval and cultural change that we're enduring that, if we're not careful, the entire realm could come crashing down around us. But I'm confident that we can do this without breaking our own nation. We've come this far and we won't trip and fall on our hooves, our faces, before we cross the finishing line. With a new commitment to the planet and to the Kyria, we can do this. I know we can, so please don't give up yet. There's so much work to be done. We have nine days left. Come on. Fickle current quick, quick, quietly shook his head as Autumn's plea was met with a mild splattering of applause. We never succeed with some curious incompetent as her in charge, he remarked as uh, Cypress Snow sat next to him. This project was too ambitious for a naive political co newcomer like her. She's only earned the position because she befriended the matriarch. Rainshine's foolish uh, nepotism will be curious undoing. Cypress hummed in thought, but shook his head. This is the most complex project perhaps any nation has undertaken in recorded history. Current's old mentor mused. She may not be the right mayor for the job, but it would be, I would be surprised if any Kieran could have completed the plan in time. Faster and more efficiently, perhaps, but the drawbacks of this likely are hardly unexpected. And to be fair to her, she has outperformed my expectations. <clears throat> oh god, we need 150 political power no matter what. Crap. Um, that won't be enough to save Kira, a current encountered. He frowned and leaned back in his seat as Autumn gathered up her papers and left the podium for the next speaker. But I don't see a change happening anytime soon. We can only hope that she does better or the realm will fall apart with her at the seams. Oh crap, this is Autumn's ship to see and we're all along for the ride. Oh. Uh, so we didn't complete it. Dang it. I'm trying to get all the focuses done. So the next time I do this, I'll, I'll know that. The ending the silence focus tree has been completed. Bruh. Chillers coming along. Trucks. Uh, let's work on guns. The budget was either proletariat. The picket lines had already been erected uh, around the factory by the time Pickle Current and Automobile pulled up in front of it, with dozens of Kieran workers standing behind them. They held signs and chanted slogans, and one of them had gathered a sizable pile of rocks that could be easily turned into missiles at a moment's notice. Uh, <clears throat> Though soot and smog hung in the fragrance air, the factory behind them was unmistakably silent, the gears of modernity ground to a halt by striking workers. Are you kidding me? 
Current frowned and stepped out of the car, moving along the cordon of private detectives and security staff that had assembled to face the striking workers. He found Cypress Snow watching them from a vantage point, a similarly displeased look on his face. The two nodded at each other in greeting and turned both their attention to the striking workers. They don't have any rising fire priests with them, Fickle noted. It's not the communalist, communalist heretics this time, Cypress said, shaking his head. They're just some workers unionizing, ensuring subversive leftist literature. There's a few rabble rousers operating within the city who might have imported it from Stalingrad. Pride wins, Scandinavia. Not that it. That where it came from really matters. What matters is that these ideas are spreading in the city and filling their heads with nonsense. It looks like the Rising Fire is a modern competitor and have a nuisance to deal with. The sight of the protesting workers and sounds of their chance took current back to his days in Skyfall, where he had seen similar unrest play out before. We know the playbook then. This is nothing we, have, we haven't dealt with in Skyfall. Right, we'll bring in the scabs from someplace rural and tell them they're getting good paying jobs and we'll let the factory get cheap replacement for the strikers. Then we'll kick the squatters out and crack some skulls if we have to. Cummins' pockets are deep enough to let some mercenaries together for a raid. Maybe Sicey will start be willing to part with some of his marines for a bit. Cypress then turned to Fickle and Brown, but we have to get control of this now and stamp the movement out of the source before it gets worse. We know how this goes because we've seen it before. We'll have to be proactive here. Find whatever subversive is stirring up the workforce and deal with them. The last thing we need is to lose fragrance to the proles. Radical Marcus will never have a home in fragrance. God dang it. I should not have done this one then. I'm just trying to make us better. That's all I want. Wow, what in half a day? That's not good enough. A tale of two scripts. <clears throat> Coin counter. Pace back and forth outside the matrix, peer, range, shine, study. Trying her best not to show her anxiety to break out in a nervous sweat at her impending meeting with the Akira's absolute theocratic leader. She had never met the matrix before, nor so much as seen her in person outside of anything resembling an official function of the state, and here she was about to spend 10, 15, or maybe even 20 minutes in conversation with her. One on one about a matter of absolute economic priority. She was terrified that she'd completely forget what she needed to say, and then stared at the matrix dumbfounded, like a deer after the invention of artificial light. Taking a deep breath. She set her folder down on a nearby table and began to leaf through its pages to remind her on what she needed to say. In fragrance and rhapsody, the returning population become so entrenched in their ways that they established a de facto parallel authority to the imperial administration that it consisted entirely of the most respected and wealthy business, Kieran, intellectuals, artists, and other high-profile figures. That was a political problem all on its own, but the economic problem at the route of it came from these figures' desire to use their paper own paper money of the Kieran tail, the golden coin that had been around since the creation of the realm. The idea of sports paper money was based on the Sicy's trading house's banknotes, which were called scripts, and were backed by the massive stocks of silver and gold Sicy possessed in Griffonia, which were slowly but surely moving back to Kyria. The scripts were far more popular and stronger than the Kieran's tail in the northern cities, were undoubtedly responsible for strong economic growth and investment among the returning to the Aspora, but undermined and devoured the tail more than circulated. And now, a coin counter to explain the situation in Matriarch and ask for her opinion on what should be the official currency of Kyria. The money was, after all, minted and circulated under her divine authority. That left Coin Counter with a tough pitch. A tough pitch to sell. Should she try to convince Rain Channel to disallow the use of the Diaspora script, strengthening the Kieran tail, reasserting Vermilion's dominance over the North but slowing its economic growth? Or should she convince the Matrix to accept the script as acceptable currency alongside the tail, even the risk of devaluing the official currency further to encourage the growth of the North even more? One nation, one currency, the tail will be only coin accepted in Kyria. Uh, Sicy scripts are growing our economy. We cannot legitimize them for pride. We gotta do this one, because we're choosing this one right now. Conclusion of three and a half year plan. Ah, we were there basically. You can't do every focus in apparently um, in time to make sure you have enough to power if, if you don't make mistakes. I might have made a mistake. But the news reached Mascot that Premier Autumn Blaze was scheduled to give a speech on that radio that evening. Word quickly spread to the small community of farmers of the city's boards that, were, that the Imperial Premier called her home. But the farmers report, even the modernization of the Grand Gallop Onward had already begun improving their lives, and many, her parents especially, feared that they would not be able to hear it. But thanks to a friend of a friend of a friend. Autumn's parents managed to find a radio, and the entire community gathered around the stacky, uh, staticky device as it strained to pick up Autumn's voice from Vermilion many kilometers away. Citizens of Vicaria, Autumn proclaimed over the radio as soon as the broadcast began, it is a great day, a momentous day. The three and a half year plan, the first phase of the Grand Gallop onward, had been a resounding success. When I first began working with her divinity, Matrix appeared arranged as her imperial premier. I was admittedly intimidated by the sheer scale of the undertaking before us as a nation, but her, answer, but her success should not have been surprising. It took a group effort to make this work. Major Eric who believed in the Grand Gallop onward, the all care plan for the National Revival, which put aside their differences to come together and create a new modern future for the, for the realm, our friends overseas, who lent us money and their expertise to catch up on a century of missed innovations, and most importantly you, the average Karen, the backbone and soul of our nation, responded to our rallying cries of modernization and helped in any and every little way you could. We could not be here tonight without you, and Concord, I'm sure, is smiling upon our favorite species. What we've accomplished will make her proud, and her favor will bless Kira for generations. <clears> Today <throat> is a great day to rejoice, Kira, of the realm. Be together with her friends and family. Invite your neighbors to drink and feast. Celebrate, and don't worry about getting a little carried away with your celebrations, as the Matriarch has declared that tomorrow should be a national holiday in celebration. So to you, Kira of Kira, good night, and may Concord bless you. 
Music signaled the end of the broadcast, but the farmers of Mascot had only just begun to cheer and stomp their hooves. In the center of it all, Autumn's mother cried tears of joy and pride held close against her husband's chest. We'll be a lively night in Mascot and all throughout the realm as a whole. We did it, we did it, Conqueror bless us all. We get political power, stability, unlock the radiant prosperity of Folk Street, and cast off the lost vestiges of the silence. Enable editing the Seafarer Banner Division template and the training and dispending of units belonging to it. Fantastic, everybody. You've actually done it. So now we have this new Focus Street. Oh, so this is still here. So we have the new Kyrian Army and Radiant Prosperity. Oh, there's nothing here. Okay, well, interesting. Increased ability of modernization. Okay, harmony, political power. Um, as a reminder, this is still in a preview build, so uh, we'll see what happens. But the Radiant Prosperity. The success of Imperial Premier Autumn Blaze's three and a half year plan has abolished the last vestiges of the silence in the realm, setting Kyria on the path to becoming a modernized industrial nation. But all Kyria plenum for national revival has matured from a shiftless. Uh, a gaggle of bickering demagogues into a form of Kira's most capable states, Kira and state and scholar officials, united by a common purpose to see the realm strong and prosperous, emerging from the silence to assert Kira's place on the world stage. The millennium is still young, and the plenum's lofty vision of an eastern Zebrica united under the aegis of the ascendant realm of Kira may well gain traction amongst the Kiran, galvanized by the nation's me meteoric rise. As the Grand Gallop onward progresses, and the Rome and the Reform Bureau, the Morning Secretariat, and the plenum all find themselves fonts of power in a rapidly centralizing nation state. Kira's diverse array of ideological tendencies must be cooperate and compromise to realize the dream of a strong and prosperous Kyria. Yeah, what is this? Declare uh, the triumph of modernization. Oh. It's been an arduous task taking delicately the breakneck speeds, but against all odds, the Kyria has stepped out of the silence with their heads held high. Having stuck or struck the perfect balance between the quest of techno industrialization and the dreams of every Kyria from all upbringings, we shall return to the world stage as Titans, accepting the ways of modernity on our terms. It's been Conrad's powers. Desk. Get some active amount of resources that can be produced by civilian factories and synthetic refineries simultaneously by one. Mirror and factory. The temperate local climate of Vernal Glade and proximity to existing transport and logistics infrastructure makes it an ideal location for the construction of a modern processing plant producing mirror. A rice wine used, widely used in Kieran cooking. Oh, that's cool. Awesome. So we did it. We absolutely did it. We could do this, but we're not doing that one. Oh, okay. Alter the deal, actually. Altering the deal. Or drone three. Oh, huh. so we can do this one. We lose some political power, but uh, we might actually do that one. We'll see. Because now we're in this one, and uh, thousand banner systems. Okay, interesting. Radiant prosperity. Um, do we have anything here? Ooh, Autumn Blaze becomes the leader of the Harmonic Party. Uh, that's not bad. Under a new constitution, the Imperial Premier will no longer govern us as Matrix of Pleasure. At the Matrix Pleasure, the new officer of the Premier of Kira will be elected by the Morning Secretariat. After all. And after all our Imperial Premiership is injured, there's only really one mayor for the job. But if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you what else we can do with the Realm of Kyria. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.